Around the country, the swing against the Liberals was nearly 4%. But here and there, some Liberals actually got swings to them. And the biggest was in the seat of Deakin in Victoria, a 3.6% swing to the Liberals on primary votes and without the help of redistributions. Now, Deakin is held by M Michael Suka, a former hotshot lawyer in his 30s, son of a Maronite Lebanese immigrant and a Conservative Liberal in a state where Liberals tend to go to water. Michael joins me now. Thank you so much for your time, mate. Good to be here, Andrew. Well, how did you do it? How did you get a swing to you and most of the Liberals uh, crying in their beer? Well, I think there's lots of factors. Obviously, I've got a very good team. I've got a wonderful campaign manager, Richard Dallariva. We have employed some new campaign techniques. I think after the 2014 state election in Victoria, we realised that we couldn't campaign as we did in the 90s, and my campaign manager... Um, brought some of those new techniques and... Give us a few hints as to what you did. In effect, it's a ground game that is there for um, many months prior to an election, in our case, 12 months prior to an election, speaking to swinging voters, identifying what their issues are. And of Everyone course... says that. Well, to actually make it happen, to identify enough swinging voters to make a material impact takes a huge ground game effort. Of course, um, there's no substitute for the member being out there shaking hands and fighting for the important... So basically you spend a lot of time in the electorate, a making calls, making the speeches, cutting the ribbons, whereas someone like Wyatt Roy, who got, what is an 8% swing against him, not 4 to him, well, it's playing Canberra games. Don't well, play Canberra games if you're just new. Is that the... Uh, I, I, think, I think every constituent I speak to want to know that we are wholly focused on them and not sidetracked by the issues in Canberra, not sidetracked side by some of the um, insider games that the media try to peddle. In my case as well in Deakin, I think they backed my strong campaign to have the East West Link built because we've got a state premier here, uh, Labor Party supported by Bill Shorten who spent over a billion dollars to cancel uh, you know, a large infrastructure Shocking project. Shocking waste of money. Um, so the single-minded focus of standing up for your electorate okay. and listening to their interests, I think, is the, the message from... You had Tony Abbott campaigning in your seat. Was that a help? Tony did visit uh, my, uh, my electorate on a, on a number of occasions during the campaign. Of course it helped. He's a... No, we're told Tony Abbott is poison, particularly in Victoria. Well, he's a, he's a great campaigner. He's been a, a good supporter of mine. Uh, but equally, I had the Prime Minister... Uh, campaign in the Deakin electorate as well. And he... Did you have the deputy leader, Julie Bishop, in your campaign? Uh, no, not during the campaign. But That's odd. Julie's... She's campaigned in every other seat in Victoria. Well, Julie's visited Deakin uh, many times over the years. Mm. Um... I wonder whether you spat in a soup or something. Um, listen, are you, you're a conservative, um, and many Liberals in Victoria in particular think that's being electorally poison, right? And the, lo the local Victorian branch here, hopeless, hopeless in that regard. Um, how, how have you managed to do it? Are you hiding your Conservative credentials or do you think it actually can work for you? No, I think people want honesty and they want to know who you are and I've been very open about my social conservatism, my views on a strong defence for our country, calling out radical Islam. Uh, these are things that are unpopular in some parts of the media but when you are honest uh, with your constituent and consistent with your own values and beliefs, I think... Uh, even if people don't always agree with you, they respect that uh, you're not too scared to say what you're really thinking. And that's probably the message. Uh, and I'm very grateful for my electorate and grateful that they've entrusted me with um, another three years as their member. Look, but this is not... I'm not just being flippant about this. As you know, the Victorian branch, uh, you know, the, the state Liberals in particular, have been pretty weak in standing up for Liberal values, right, from Ted Ballew and even before that. Uh, current membership e even now. Um, and it's, it's been sort of seen as conservative, that's old. You've got to ditch that. And that's been also a metaphor for the Turnbull years. Do you think the Liberals can be proudly conservative and still win in the public debates? Absolutely. I think we absolutely can. I think um, at a very micro level, Deakin is an example of that. Uh, but again, we can't be ideological. I referred to um, the state Labor government and particularly Daniel Andrews' decision around the East-West Link. What has made them so unpopular 
is that they are so ideological and, in my view, they govern for everybody within a three kilometre radius of the CBD. Now, as Conservatives, we can't be ideological either. We can be consistent with our values. You've got to have values, though. But not ideological. No. And, and I think that's the line that we'll need to walk. And we well, can well, walk. Well, let me... If, uh, a lot of journalists, and in particular in Victoria, but broadly, a lot of journalists, uh, Sydney Morning Herald journalists, etc., um, the mantra has gone up, has been for a long time, uh, Malcolm Turnbull has dragged the party not enough to the left. He's too in hoc to the Conservatives, and if only he would speak out on same-sex marriage and global warming and all these things, he would have been much better. Whereas there are other journalists like me, or commentators like me, who say, wait a minute, you've gone too far to the left, you've got to mend your relationship with the base. Given your experience, where do you stand on that? Have, move, move more to the left or healed the base? Well, I, I don't agree with the characterisation of... Well, sorry, I do agree with the characterisation of the Sydney Morning Herald that the Prime Minister hasn't dragged our party to the left. He's, in my view, maintained a steady course, a course that's consistent with... Conservative values, but understanding we are a Liberal Party too, and we have um, a, a large part of our party who we would describe as small our Liberals, and they and their values must be accommodated because they do represent a portion of our community. And I, so I would agree with the Sydney Morning Herald. I think the Prime Minister has struck a middle course, uh, and uh, as a Conservative in the party room, I can tell you that. You know, my views, uh, when I've um, pushed them with the Prime Minister and other senior members of our leadership team, have been uh, adhered to and listened to, um, and I'm sure that will continue. So yeah, but then, I, I think we, we have to always understand that this is not within the Liberal Party a winner-takes-all culture where no. the Conservatives say we are going to stamp our authority on the party or... Uh, those who are not conservative, conservatives are doing the same. I think yes, but the, point is, the point is, of course, that Malcolm Turnbull has slighted uh, and annoyed quite a few members of your base. You would know that too in your branch exactly. You know, the superannuation thing, not talking to conservatives, uh, the slighting of Tony Abbott. You know that's there. And also the fact that he wouldn't campaign on things like boats, he left out the bits of Peter Dutton. He wouldn't campaign on the carbon tax uh, that Labor's promising to bring back. Uh, Same-sex marriage he was talking about so often, the iftar dinner that he held. I mean, you must have been a little bit distressed by the focus of the campaign. Well, I mean, to take your, your point on the plebiscite for same-sex marriage, I, I, I think that's a absolute example where the Prime Minister has held the No, but he's not happy with it. With he's made it very clear several times in the debate in the election campaign, the only reason he was doing it was because these stupid Conservatives have foisted it on him. Well, look, there's lots of... You made that clear. When we're looking at the issues that were the centrepiece of this campaign, I think there's a lot... There will be a lot of soul-searching to be done on the campaign. Those don't all rest with the Prime Minister, um, even though the Prime Minister magnanimously took responsibility for the campaign. But let's he just... He didn't take... You saw well, the he, clips. He, he, He's he not did, taking... Andrew, he, did, he did today. In a formal sign and then, uh, state, no, and no, then no. said, oh, listen, by the way, it's Labor and you people for listening to Labor's lies. That's not taking cam well, uh, responsibility. I think we do have to... Um, and as someone on the front lines in a marginal seat here, we do have to recognise that the, the cards in the deck are stacked against the Liberal Party. Because when I was out on a polling booth, I had get up with tens of people there. I had the United Firefighters Union, I had the Australian Education Union, I had the ETU. You did. And I had volunteers, people often, retirees, who were volunteers were that's doing That's good, but that's getting off the track of Malcolm Turnbull. But we've got to call out He did not horrific take lies. responsibility. You name one thing that he said in today's press conference that it was an admission of error on his part. Well, now, one thing. I think now is not the time to be... The focused. fact that you didn't mention it doesn't mean you well, couldn't no, think no, of no. one? I, I don't think now is the time to be um, trying to undertake the post-election review. We are still... When? Before an election? Well, we are still in the hunt to form a majority government. I'm still, voted. I'm still optimistic that we can um, win 76 seats, govern in our own right, and... Well, how does, that stop, we, how does the count stop you having a post-mortem about what the hell just went down? Well, the post-mortem will be done when the dust settles, and I don't think we can say the dust has settled just yet. All right. Andrew. In the papers today, we read already, some other people are doing post-mortems. 
Queensland Liberals saying that voters reacted very badly to campaign letterhead and logos that renamed the Liberal and National Parties the Turnbull Coalition Team. And you saw this Turnbull Coalition logo in the TV campaign ads as well. And I had uh, listens on my radio show saying, yes, you know, Turnbull's taken our party away from us. He's branded it, his own party with a crazy logo. Um, this complaint from the Queensland people is that it robbed the party of its identity and personalised the campaign, making the figurehead someone who actually wasn't half as liked as he thought he was. Did you use that letterhead too? I did. Yeah, I used the letterhead. I did use my own letterhead in instances. There were How many instances? There were, there you were preferred instances, your own letterhead? Well, there were instances where we, we did use the Prime Minister's letterhead. There were um, instances where we used mine, but we got to choose those. And this, is, this, this comes back to my point about Deakin. In our local campaign, we asserted a level of control over our own campaign, uh, and that included instances... Maybe more people should have done that well, and torn did, off the leadhead as well. It, it did include... That's ridiculous. Well, it did include instances where we used the Prime Minister's leadhead and, and others yeah, how many? didn't. Um, so, but we take ultimate responsibility, and I don't think, Andrew, with all due respect, you can blame the Prime Minister for putting his leadhead on a letter. Those decisions would be made by the campaign team... The man, uh, not the Prime Minister. Sometimes you flatter the bosses. I'm not talking you, talking you personally. You tell, tell the bosses what they'd like to hear. And if the boss is a bit of a megalomaniac and you say, your boss, I want you to stand next to a thing that says Turnbull Coalition Team, a man of humility might say, listen, no, it's the Liberal and National Party. John Howard wouldn't have done that. Well, I don't think the logo, Andrew, is you know really John Howard the main wouldn't have done game. That. I, I don't no, think but it's, it's emblematic of a man who focused the party on himself, thought that his popularity would be enough, smile and a shine, no real policies, didn't campaign on the Abbott uh, track, thought that his popularity would carry the day, and it didn't. Well, Andrew, the... And I wonder whether you think this man can seriously lead you to another election. Of course I do. Um, I liken this to Howard 98, uh, Bob Hawke in 1990, when Bob Hawke won 78 seats, admittedly in a 148-seat parliament. Uh, we now have to provide the most effective, stable government for this country. And there's, and there's a choice, Andrew. And I, I understand your frustration. I understand your frustration. Speaking in, to your own branch can, members can, too, they'd be can, furious. I can understand your well-motivated frustration because the choice we have now is a stable coalition government it's not stable. or a union-controlled Labor Party. And that is no, the no, choice. No, 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 that's, and, that is not I'll, the choice. And, the election's well, that, there. That, is, that will be the choice decided in coming days. The choice will be an unstable uh, uh, government led by a man who's lost every fight that is uh, taken where it involves talking to the public, uh, where the Senate he can't well, control, or whether fight. you get another leader who with more... more ability to unite the party. That's well, the choice. Well, Andrew, we haven't lost this fight yet. As I said, I th I'm still confident we can form a majority oh, I think you I think you'll get government. And, That's not the issue. Uh, well, well, in, in 1998, John Howard lost 14 seats. He fought now, in a good cause. He the, lost the, it the fighting party. for a GST. What did this bloke lose it well, for? Well, we have fought it for a very good cause of prudent fiscal management, cleaning up um, our, our work sites, trying to impose some law and order on our unions. Don't underestimate how hard that is. Why do you think the union movement put in millions and no, millions uh, look, of dollars? On that point, uh, in that point, to I hold completely the line agree with on, you. On the, the, the lawlessness that they um, now take for granted. Yep. So my, I, I, can, I can assure you, Andrew, um, as a conservative backbencher, an unashamed conservative... You can assure me you'll hold him to the mark. Well, I can assure you that we will do everything we possibly can to support him and our leadership to provide the stable government that this country I needs. I should toss him overboard. But is, Michael Sucker, look, country now, Andrew. Michael Sucker, thank you so much. And congratulations, uh, a swing to you. You must be doing something right. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me, Andrew. And uh, after the break, some journalists who back Turnbull as the Liberals' messiah, why aren't they saying sorry? <laughs> This is Jacinda. She's doing the school run. <laughs> Look at the guy. We need a car like that. Because she's mostly at home and parks the car in a garage, she saved over $150 when she switched her car insurance to Yui. Yui, we get you. Call one through Yui or go to yui.com.au. I'll see you in the boardroom. <laughs> 